Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Just looking at various things here. That's my ignition module up there. Okay, there's a the voltage regulator. Look. There's a voltage regulator. I've got a couple of wires that I need to tidy up. There's a fuse box. The two on the right are battery feeds. And the two on the left come from the, um, the accessory terminal on the uh, ignition switch. And there's an earth up there, look, to the left. Yeah, looking good. This one goes down to the generator and this one goes to the coil and on onwards to the distributor. Yeah, not bad. Just got a couple of loose ones here. Just got a couple of loose ones here to tie up. I'm not going to bind everything. I'm just going to kind of tape it at every, you know, four or five inches. Hello, right, on the back of this ignition switch is the ignition terminal and it has two terminals so onto the second one I've hooked a little wire which connects to the back of this light here. It's this yellow wire, this short yellow wire and then that goes into this bulb which is insulated from the metal it then goes down this yellow wire down there, comes down and is connected on there to the armature terminal on the um, voltage regulator. So that's the one where you put the ignition on and the light comes on until it starts charging and then the light will go off. Okay, right. Oh, uh, the guy sent me another flasher unit. I put some tape over it to calm it down a little bit and I, I need to rig up some way of mounting it, but that's there, just nestling there at the moment. And uh, it appears to work. So if I put that on, it's got a suitably annoying uh, buzz. But not too loud. There's the indicators flashing front. And rear. In fact you can see them both from there. So there's the indicators flashing front and rear. The other one that he sent wouldn't do that. But that one does it okay so I'll feed that back to him this one works okay on conventional bulbs right okay oh I've got to, I've got to put an earth on that I've got to earth that better that don't work so that's probably about the last of the wire jobs that's all connected now okay that's all connected so I need to bind some of these wires together at the back of here just to keep them nice and tidy looking. So what I think, so today I've put that on for the fuel gauge and I'll put that one on there for the ignition, you know, charging light. And I've changed the flashing unit, which now works. So that's good so at that point now I'm almost almost at the point of saying the wiring is done I just need to improve the earth on this fuel pump because it's got an earth but it, you know where it's bolted on is all covered in paint so I need to scrape the paint off and make it earth a bit better so that's the last of the wiring jobs, I think. And this is where my handbrake isn't connected. And that's where my brake cylinder hasn't got any fluid in it. Uh, yeah, I've got to do quite a bit of work yet. 
but getting there slowly bit by bit hello uh, I've just um, bolted the tank down I've put it on some rubber pads uh, and I've used a bolt there look what I've done I've used an 8mm bolt a piece of petrol pipe over it as a, as a buffer and a nylon nut I just want to get it bolted in place Oops, and I've used the same on the other side and to get it on I had to undo the tar light because it was in the way so while it's off I can show you where that number plate bracket is welded on there it's a bit thin but um, you know we'll see how it goes you couldn't really see that when I was trying to show it the other day and there's the thing on the back and I used rubber washers there look where the plate bolts on so hopefully that should be okay okay I'm gonna put this back in place now Hello, I've just done a little a little quickie job um, we just had a really violent thunderstorm here one of the strikes is really close you can hear some alarms going off well you might not be able to hear uh, I just made a couple of little spacer plates I'll probably have to just touch them in with a bit of paint but I just test fitted them a couple of little spacer plates, I had a quarter plate or six mil plate because this, uh, I don't know how it's set up, I don't know if the, this is set up so the bumper iron goes here but with this bolted tight it was too tight for the tank so I've just done them, drilled them, drilled all the holes so they're slightly oversized you know nice clearance and I've got half inch bolts in there half inch nuts in there just done them up tight and the only thing I had to do was I had to use a slightly shorter bolt there and I had to take a nut and turn it down on the lathe just to give some clearance there I think there's a foul condition there I don't know quite what's out of shape I think this this uh, horn might be slightly out of shape but anyway that's that's how it is so the tank's sitting on rubber pads it's got rubber underneath so Hopefully it should be, um, you know, not uh, fatiguing. I just wanted to have a break. From, I've been on the computer most of the day doing some editing of footage, so I wanted to just come out and do something. Okay, I'm going to go back in and continue doing what I was doing. See you. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. I've been working on my 32 quite intensively and I have reached the point where I can now say I've finished the wiring I haven't run the engine yet there's no fuel in the tank but I'm going to leave that a little bit because there are some other jobs that need to be done so I'm going to start working my way through those jobs one of the jobs is to adjust the brakes and bleed the brakes Another is to rig up a handbrake or emergency brake. I've got the lever in the car, the lever's there, and the end of it just comes through there, but there's nothing attached to it. So today what I think I'm going to do is jack the back end up, put it on some stands, and um, take the wheels off, take the hubs off and uh, at least get the emergency brake cable in and coming forward then I can see what I need to do to link from that lever back to the loop of cable that, that goes on there it's, a, it's um, a 40 type cable okay well I'm going to start working on that then and um, I'll bring you back when I've got a little bit to show got the first side on well the first side handbrake cable in place there I had to improvise a little washer because I haven't got any of the little slip washers that you put on there the little split washers I just got a washer and cut it twisted it and then put it on and then straightened it out I'm assuming that's okay and what I've done I've just put a pair of needle nose pliers there to stop this spring kind of pushing the cable down there I'm just having a think I, I might um, 
this is a little bit greasy here or oily so I think I might clean this clean the hub but I'm thinking at the moment right now this minute there's nothing to stop me putting the um, hub back on I need a seal and a good washer for the end of the spindle there I'll, I'll put this hub on and I'll tackle the other side back in a bit hello well it, it took two or three goes but I now have a working handbrake there's the lever that's fully off this is my little jury rigged bit of codgery from bits of scrap that I had lying around somewhere I have got a quadrant that should go there but I just can't lay my hands on it at the moment um, <clears throat> pardon me there's a couple of shackle plates there the piece that I've had in a drawer that I think is off a Ford 100 e the 5 16 bolt a 5 16 bolt a nut that can be used as a lock nut some sort of a brake clevis don't know where from a stud just taking the place of a clevis that I can put in there and that's the original lever there so with that off like that now I've adjusted these brakes so they're a little bit draggy they're a bit tight that's but I have adjusted them tight I expect them to kind of wear in one click two clicks three clicks and you can feel the tension on the system there okay I need to tighten that up because that's just riding off the thing there right. I can make improvements if it proves not to be working right but you've got to get something in place just for instance to, to know the working length of the pieces you want um, and that's rock solid now that's completely solid now plenty of tension in the wires okay so oops. so there's the cables running back from what I know it's just a standard kind of 40 cable so I need to improve this yeah I can think of something but at least I know I know the dimension now from there to there and somewhere I have got some other parts that I might be able to use but for now that's actually less jury rig than some that I've seen okay right which way up are we hopefully it's like that so there's actually one of the first functioning major parts on the vehicle having the handbrake hooked up okay I will bring you back when there's more to share cheers then back in a bit Hello, look, I took my um, shock brackets off and um, welded the headlamp brackets to them. I got the, I got the MIG set on full power and um, I preheated this with the oxyacetylene before I started so it wasn't like a cold, so it wasn't like a cold shock weld. Uh, and there's the other one down there. That one come out a bit better because the part fitted a little bit better. Uh, this one had a little bit more of a gap that needed to be kind of bridged. Still, I'm pretty sure it will 
uh, you know, be nice and firmly attached. I'm just doing those round of little jobs that need finishing off. I've done things around the back axle like the adjust the brakes and um, do the handbrake cable and now I'm doing things in the vicinity of the front axle. Uh, the headlamp brackets and the lower shock mounts. I think one of them isn't finished. One's finished I think and the other's not finished. But I want to put a bead of weld between the shock mount and the wishbone. Okay, right, I'll leave these to cool down then. The bigger the blob, the better the job. Okay, right, so back in a bit. Well, uh, I'm under the front end of the 32. Here's the lower shock mount. What I've done, I've just ground an area, I've just ground an area there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a bead of weld there just to stop this from turning relative to that. Um, I was thinking that in a little hidden away area like that, it won't be seen particularly, obviously. And, um, you know, if ever this was dismantled, you know, 10 years from now, it'll be easy just to grind that off and cut, touch it up and you know, the wishbone, wishbone wouldn't be permanently harmed. There's that one. Just ground that one as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the oxyacetylene, warm it, because it's a big lump of metal, then come in with the MIG and just put a half inch bead of MIG there. I've made another nut. I've got special nuts in here. They're... Um, aircraft nuts but they're turned with a taper and these are bored with a taper okay right back in a bit okay not a great weld um but it has caught the two sides together it's something that can be monitored and revisited if need be this side's a little better, a little better. What I should have done is uh, done this welding job before everything was assembled so I could have the axle on its side, up on end on its side and be working downwards. My problem is working underneath the car. But it is something that I wanted to do and uh, I have done it. Okay, right, not a great job, but you know, better than nothing at all, I think. Hello, <clears throat> I'm bleeding the brakes, and I appear to have a problem. Bled the brakes and uh, it now has a pedal as such. It's got a pedal and I've connected the brake light switch wires and that works as well. You can see it reflected in the headlamp of the car. I've just put the front wheels on. I've just come to put this wheel on and look, there's brake fluid on the floor underneath. See it there, look. Now I didn't see this last night when I did the brake bleeding. And it doesn't appear to have come down the outside of the cylinder. So 
I'm going to have to pull this drum and have a look. It's some, the whale cylinder's leaking, isn't it, inside? Which is rather annoying. Okay, I will pull the hub and have a look. Okay. Okay. Well, the good news is that it doesn't appear to be leaking inside. I must have not looked carefully enough on this side. So what does this tell me? Yeah, actually I can see fluid there. I think that union there might need nipping up. Hello, um, I've just drilled and tapped, I'll blow these out, I just drilled and tapped two holes there and I've just took one of them, you know, rubber exhaust bobbins and um, I've kind of sawn them down and sawn it there, sawn it there and I'm going to screw that one in there and screw that one in there and hopefully you know, they can act as a, a pedal stop. Let's see how it works out. They screwed in really well actually. Screwed in. There, this one overlaps that gap just very slightly, so that's good because that'll support the, the other piece. But no, I think that's pretty good. I can adjust them to that now. So, I think I'm in a position to put this in for the last time. This is where I cut a groove for wires to go through but I'm not going to use that. So I'll just put a bit of black stain in there. Okay back in a bit. In the absence of anything better I'm going to just use two of these little springs here just to bring the pedal take the pressure off the pedal there. You can see where it's on that rubber See where it's coming up to that rubber thing. So what I've done, I've just made a little sort of um, a, a wire spring retainer from eighth inch wire that'll go through there. That'll go through there. And I'm, I'm going to need two hands for this, but basically I'm going to pull the springs back and I'll hook them onto those two little hooks there. So. And there's two springs there. They're not very strong, but there are two of them. Okay. That's in place. It's not a proper engineered solution. But it's okay. And they won't pop off. There's the little hooks in place. I might put a little bit more bend on that one there. And I just need to give that another couple of turns on that nut there. Um, I'm a bit lacking in um, clevis pins, so I've, I've sort of temporarily fitted some, a bolt, can you see there's a bolt down there? A bolt with a, a bolt with a, a nylock nut. And I've done the same there. I haven't got any, I've got a lot of clevises but they're all just a little bit too short so I've used a bolt with a you know plain shank and just uh, put a nylock nut on them, a very high quality nylock nut and I've nipped that up and I've put a lock nut on that bolt there as well. So that's my return spring for the brake and I need to do something similar for the clutch. I also need to insert that rod, uh, that shaft, rotate it and put the pin through there. Okay, right, jolly good. I'll bring it back when there's a little bit more to show. I'm just trying to tidy up these loose ends now. Uh, I'm having to use slightly temporary measures here and there. 
but you know, hey, as long as I'm getting the job done. Okay, back in a bit. That um, wasn't particularly easy, but I've managed to rig up some sort of a return for the clutch. I've got two of those springs on there, and um, they will come to a what's actually a straightened out hose clamp, pipe clamp there. It's just hooked under that head of that bolt there. I need to just do a little bit more tightening on that bolt, pull it up snug. Okay, back in a bit. Hello, right, I'm under the car. This is my brake push rod here. Uh, there's the master cylinder. Um, I just wanted to show you that you need to have this like a rattling loose fit. This is the adjuster. If I tighten that up you can see the rattling is getting less and that's that's tight now that's actually tight but that would cause a problem because it would hold the if it was any tighter than that it would hold the piston past the uh, recuperation port and that's no good so you have to have some slack so let's go two three four five six that's six flats, that's one turn, that's, and that's a, a rattling fit now. But you don't want more than that because you're throwing away brake travel. So what I wanted to do is to just... That's alright, that's tight now. Got a little bit of looseness to it. So there's no lost movement now in that brake pedal. Okay, that's good then. Righto, back in a bit. Nice. Okay. Okay, I've got split pins in all the um, things now. Springs on springs on, nut bolt, that bolt's done up, that's adjusted, a little bit of wiggle room there, you must always monitor that, if it gets to zero you've got to adjust it and put some in, I think there should be a lock nut on there but I think it'll be alright as it is, put a split pin in the cutter pin at the front, that's just a bolt to retain the springs, put a nut and bolt in there, down there. I've adjusted the push rod. I think I might actually put a tiny bit more free play in that. Yeah, it's a bit too tight that is. I don't, th I don't think it's too tight that it would cause a problem, but I think it's, I'd rather just feel a tiny bit there. I can't feel actually any free play. Just give it a bit more, so let's have a think. That's got free play in there, definitely. Okay. Right. Let's see how that fails. Right, break. Yeah, that, that's better. I can feel that now. That's, you can feel the... You probably can't see it, but I can just feel a tiny bit now. There's a tiny bit. And if you can see that through there, you can just see it riding up and then bottoming. Okay, so there's the brakes, nice and solid clutch, put the dip switch in. I need to kind of bind these wires up in this area here so that the floorboard can it can pass through a tunnel in the floorboard. Okay, back in a bit. Hello, I've just bound that little bit of the loom there and that's where the 
it's got to be bridged by the floorboard so I'm going to offer the floorboard into place now I think they're chopping some trees down nearby you can hear it can't you okay I'll put that pin in there and the little lock locking pin that holds it I can go underneath and put some grease on the pedals so that's in place that's, that can all just sit there, that'll be underneath the floor, that'll be alright down there. Everything's hooked up, so I think I'm going to try and put the floorboard in, see if the floorboard will go in. I've um, I taped the loom where it went through that there, and I've fitted the floor, and the, the harness is kind of, you know, a good loose fit there, so it's not been bound by the, you know, been fouled by the floor. Um, I carried on winding actually I didn't really intend to do that but I thought well I'll, I'll bind this bit that goes up here because to be honest that's the only bit of the harness that's on show and without really intending to I've carried on up here and I've got to this point here and uh, I'm just showing you that I, I had these temporary things I had some made out of insulating tape and some made out of masking tape and um, they're easy to hang on just need two hands for a second easy to undo and then take off and then you can you know bind them properly so I'm just going to bind it up to here um, and I, I might bind that little loop that goes down there as well but that'll be it that'll be open and everything under the car will be open and I might just do there as well to hide those red wires yeah so it doesn't really hurt does it to bind it once you've got everything laid in place this can be clipped onto here that was the intention with that so can you hear those chainsaws okay I need two hands for this so I will find it up to that point there and um, call it good okay thanks a lot then I'll catch you in a bit catch you a bit later bye